Hey everyone, Anthony Venuta here with InTouch Mortgage Solutions. It's Friday, Finance Fridays. And on this episode, we're gonna be talking about mortgage renewals. Is it worth switching your mortgage over for a slightly better interest rate? What do you need to consider? What are some of the costs? Stay tuned, you don't wanna miss this. For many Canadians who are approaching their mortgage maturity date or their mortgage renewal in 2023, there might be a lot of things to consider, especially as that time horizon might be closing in. But even for Canadians who maybe have their mortgage renewal coming up in the following year, or maybe even just renewed their mortgage recently, there's a lot of things to consider when it comes to your mortgage. Now, for this episode, what I'm gonna do is talk a little bit more about mortgage renewals, break down some particular examples on what the cost associated with switching that mortgage over maybe to a different lender is, looking at some of those cost benefits, as well as understanding a little bit more about what Canadians can anticipate in this higher rate environment. Now, I wanna kick off by talking a little bit more about the mortgage renewal process. What does it mean for a Canadian to go through the mortgage renewal process? What are your options and what you can and cannot do? So obviously with a mortgage renewal, if you plan to stay with your existing lender, you have the capacity to renegotiate with them. Uh, and basically not have to undergo any qualification, stress test rules, income validation, appraisals, and so on. You basically negotiate the contract, sign back the renewal, and you're set for the next duration of either one to five years, maybe be seven or 10, or maybe variable. Maybe it's an open contract. Each lender will provide you with a actual renewal statement, and on that, they'll give you different terms and options that the lender will offer. Now, it's important to understand that when you get to the mortgage renewal or this maturity date, you are considered basically like a free agent. I draw the parallel to, let's say, sports professionals. Once their contract is up, they have the ability to maybe seek uh, an extended contract with their team, with the lender, or you have the opportunity to look elsewhere to see what other offers are going to be presented. And obviously, speaking with a mortgage professional, find out what those options and solutions could look like is obviously your best advantage to make sure that you're keeping more money in your pocket. But you'll be getting that statement generally three to six months prior to that maturity date. Now it's important to understand that not all lenders will send it out three to six months. Some lenders will send it out sooner. Maybe you've been contacted uh, already about mortgage renewal and your mortgage might not be up for some time. But obviously putting an action plan in place, whether that mortgage is coming up for renewal in 2023 or even in 2024, understanding that three to six months before that mortgage renews, you have the opportunity to renegotiate with that lender. Now, if you're planning to switch, let's say to a different lender who's gonna offer you maybe different products like a line of credit, if your lender doesn't have one that you're currently with, or maybe you're looking for that better interest rate, obviously you have to understand that you have that ability to switch over when your mortgage expires. And in order to avoid any additional cost when it comes to penalties, you do need to ensure that that mortgage is being switched on that specific date, as some lenders may penalize clients three months interest or interest rate differential on the days remaining. So once again, speaking with your mortgage professional about those particular nuances will help you keep more money in your pocket. But obviously when you're switching a mortgage over maybe to a different lender, you have to keep the parameters of that mortgage identical. Now, what do we mean by that? Let's say you took on a 25 year mortgage Five years has elapsed and now you're basically at a 20 year amortization remaining, maybe less because you've increased your payments or maybe you've added some additional funds to your uh, principal, obviously, but that amortization has to transfer to the new lender as well as the same mortgage amount. So basically you're just continuing on. What's happening is the lender is just taking registration or ownership of that mortgage from one institution and transferring it to another. Now there's a lot of benefits and you know costs associated with potentially transfers. A lot of lenders will offer cashback incentives and some lenders may even offer to cap or include some of those costs in the transfer of those mortgages. But there are some things to consider. Obviously, one important thing to consider if you're switching to a different lender is your income and qualification. If you had some significant change to your employment, credit or income, and maybe at this current moment with interest rates being elevated, uh, you may not qualify under the current stress test rules So you might only be left with the option to negotiate with your existing lender. Now, what I want to do is go through some different options when it comes to the renewals for clients that are approaching in this window. So we did have this particular client that is just coming out of their uh, five-year contract and we're looking to uh, shop around for some different options. And I want to present the scenario to you, our viewers. 
Now looking at this renewal scenario for a fixed rate mortgage in 2023, in the white column, we'll notice that you'll have your mortgage details that generally are very common, your rate, term, monthly payment, amortization, and basically the balance at maturity, interest paid, and principal paid. In the gold uh, item uh, column, you'll see that the original mortgage balance was 450000 in 2018. At that particular point in time, the client did get a mortgage rate of 2.79% for five years, and their monthly payment was originally $2,081.41. Basically, that was a 25 year amortization, and the balance of maturity that will be carried forward is $383,071.73. Over the course of that five years, the clients had paid around $57,000 or almost $58,000 in interest, and their principal is closer to $67,000. So you can see how the interest rate allowed more money to go towards principal than towards interest. Now, if we switch over, this is what we were able to get the client offered uh, on a five-year fix that they were looking to transfer over. As you can see, the balance transfers over the five-year term. The new payment has gone up to $2,438.89. And basically, the remaining amortization uh, when they approach the renewal starts at 20 years, and then they'll be at 15 uh, once that five years elapses. And that's going to be the mortgage balance at the maturity rate. And obviously you're gonna see the interest and principal paid are gonna be significantly uh, higher due to the interest rate change. So as you can see, there's a very significant change in the payment. Let's say the client decides to go into a three-year product. This is what we presented to them. We were able to get them around this rate, 4.79. And obviously you can see the payments are changing a little bit. You know, it goes up uh, a little bit to 247982. Obviously, the mortgage balance at maturity is going to be a little bit higher because the duration of the mortgage instead of five is only three years. And then we also presented the client with the option for a two-year. Now, the rate was significantly higher. Uh, the client's concern were just weighing out their options in regards to uh, timelines, right? In regards to what they believe that interest rates would look like in two, three, or five years. So this is an example of a fixed rate mortgage scenario where we're breaking it down for our clients to say, hey, this is what you were previously looking at. This is what it's going to look like now. Now, we did have another set of clients that we did present this information for who had a variable rate mortgage, but I, for the simplicity and obviously for the sake of keeping things consistent, I just made the parameters all the same in regards to the $450,000 mortgage. So here's the example of a renewal for a variable rate mortgage. Obviously, the uh, ideas here are that the prime was elevated, obviously uh, not as high as it is today, uh, but back in 2018, the average prime rate was around 3.95%, and we look at the term where the client had received a discounted rate of 2.92%, and their monthly payments were around $2,011.18, and it was a 25-year amortization, and there's the balance of maturity, which would be carried forward. So let's say you're uh, a variable rate client holder, and let's say you had a very similar mortgage, what could you look forward to in renewals in 2023? And obviously understanding that interest rates are definitely a little bit more elevated at the current moment. And the, you know, around the best the discounted rate would probably be around prime minus 190 to prime minus one on an insurable deal. And uh, obviously insurable deals meaning uh, less than uh, basically around 25 years or less amortization. Mortgage balances uh, sub a million, below a million dollars. And obviously it has to fit the insurer's guidelines. Uh, in this particular case, if you're switching or transferring into an insurable product, uh, it is lender paid insurance. So the client doesn't have to pay anything in regards to that. So that discount rate is applicable to this particular product. And obviously you can see how that payment has jumped substantially uh, from $2,011.18 to $2,670.81. And obviously the balance of maturity will have come down a little bit, but as you can see, the interest and principal uh, have increased significantly. So making these di differentiations, if you're choosing to stay variable or fixed, uh, comes down to a few different things that we would have a conversation with our client about. And obviously there are particular clients right now um, that may have purchased new construction homes and haven't sold yet and their maturity windows are uh, coming up. And because of the fact that they have been delayed, maybe their mortgage balance or mortgage maturity is coming up prior to their sale and prior to their closing, what do they do in regards to uh, ensuring that their mortgage is less uh, subjected to penalty? And that is sort of maybe either taking an open product or uh, looking at a variable rate product with a three month interest penalty. 
uh, because they don't want to necessarily lock in for one year because they're going to be closing in a few months and they don't want to have to pay that interest rate differential. And obviously that's a conversation that you should be having uh, with your mortgage professional to ensure that you're keeping a lot of that money in your pocket and you're fully aware of all the complications or costs that could be associated. Now, the last chart that I want to present is basically a cost benefit chart to looking at switching the mortgages over. Um, a lot of times we'll get these questions, Anthony, what am I saving? What am I paying? And obviously, is it worth to switch over to a different lender? Especially in this rate environment right now where a lot of clients aren't necessarily taking on a five-year fixed, especially if they're staying in that property for a longer period of time. Uh, a lot of clients might be taking on a two or three-year product as those seem to be uh, aggressively priced at the moment. Um, so obviously the rates that we're offering right now to clients uh, could be substantially lower in the next few months or they could be substantially higher in the next few months depending on what happens in the market. As we do know, uh, the Bank of Canada has decided to potentially hit the pause as they wait uh, to see if their monetary policy tightening has actually had the desired impact uh, when it comes to consumer sentiment and inflation. Now, taking a look at the renewal cost and benefit chart, uh, you'll see that on the left-hand side in white, obviously there's the rate, the terms, and some of the parameters uh, for the mortgage details to look at the uh, you know side-by-side -side comparison. So in yellow, here is the uh, lender, uh, the same lender giving the client that renewal for the 383,971.73, and the renewal rate that they were offering them is 4.99% for five years and obviously that payment now is 25 21 10 and obviously for them to stay with that lender there's obviously no cost for them to stay there and obviously no qualification but let's say the borrower wanted to switch over to a more aggressive rate and let's say they were able to get 4.59 percent for five years obviously the payment would be 2438.89 and that's a substantial savings of around 82 dollars and 21 cents per month and over the course of that five years, the client would basically save around $4,932.60. However, there are things to consider when getting out of a mortgage. And obviously some of the things we touched upon earlier is what is that discharge fee? The discharge fee for particular lenders can range from $300 to $450 plus. And for example, we use $400 here. And the switch cost for basically uh, switching that mortgage over internally whether the client decides to use the lender's internal closing uh, measures or they decide to use a lawyer, uh, there are some costs and we basically round that up to $900. As a side note, it is important to note that some lenders can not cap uh, those costs associated with the transfer back into the mortgage. Some lenders, as I mentioned, may offer a cashback incentive. Uh, it is important to understand those cashback incentives may come with some red tape, um, especially if you're getting it out of that mortgage sooner. And obviously, if that lender requires you to open a bank account with that particular lender and the cost associated uh, with that. But, you know, there are ways for them to cover the cost. We're just taking the example that this lender doesn't offer cash back. Uh, they're just offering a very aggressive rate. And obviously, the savings uh, for the client, the total savings would be $3,092.60. Uh, now, that's at a five-year mortgage. Obviously, there is a substantial savings there. Probably worth it for the client if they do desire to take on a five-year product in this environment um, to basically gain those savings. Now, let's take a client, who, for example, who doesn't want to take on five years and let's say they want to take on a three-year at a slightly higher rate, but just marginally better than what the lender is offering. And let's say that rate's at 4.89% for three years. Obviously, that payment is $2,542, uh, $2, and it's only an additional savings of around $20.68 per month. And although it is, does add up over the three years, it comes out to around $744.48. Now, once you look at that savings, but you deduct the actual discharge fee of $400 and the additional cost to switch of $900, you're actually, not out, you're actually out of pocket $552.52. So obviously in this particular scenario, does it make sense to switch over or move from lender that you're with to a different lender? Obviously that is a decision that the client has to make in regards to their monthly finances. If that $20 is better, better allocated somewhere else, or you know if their financial situation determines that that is the best uh, way to proceed, um, or they're not looking at a three-year, maybe they don't want to take on a three-year. 
There's so many different scenarios that are playing out right now, like the charts we presented earlier, you know, like a two year, for example. And, you know, we didn't do a one year, but one years are relatively high at the current moment. They're hovering around the high, high fives and low, low sixes, depending on the type of lender. And obviously, as I said, as rates are changing and evolving on a regular basis, any rate that we're presenting now uh, could change within the days or weeks ahead as uh, the bond market continues to move. But obviously, it's important to understand that this, this switch idea here, um, if you're taking on the five-year, it seems to make sense to me. And if you go into a three-year, although the monthly payments are a little bit less, you end up coming out of pocket over the three-year term. So are you actually doing any justice? And in the sense of having to requalify, provide all the documentation, again, it depends on uh, if you're able to do so. So there is a lot of things to take into consideration uh, when you're approaching that renewal window and obviously working with a mortgage professional who uh, can best guide you and present you with the correct data and obviously breaking down these costs associated with it. It's not just about uh, switching the mortgage over for a cheaper interest rate because as you can tell from depending on the term, uh, and it might costing you more money than you actually anticipated. So these are some important things to really take a look at. Now, if you find this information and this content uh, valuable, we ask you or kindly ask you to hit the like, share, and subscribe button, hit that notification bell so that you can help the YouTube algorithm uh, get this content out to as many Canadians as possible. As I think this conversation is very important, especially uh, in this higher rate environment where many Canadians are looking for ways to keep more money in their pocket. And uh, we'll leave the video here. We're wishing everyone a great Friday. Thank you for clicking. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next week.